All right. Brian, uh, here we are again. It seems like we just did this a month ago. Uh, how you doing? Uh, do, doing great, Sean. I'll, I'll tell you just real briefly before we get into the meat of the uh, the podcast here. Just spent the day yesterday at the time we're recording this out at Medoc Mountain with our GRIT program. Uh, this is our second event of the season so far, and Shell's just doing a phenomenal job uh, getting some of our female athletes together here in the preseason. Beautiful weather, beautiful trails up there. Uh, 30 minutes north of Rocky Mountain, where we'll be hosting our league summit. I know we'll talk about that a little bit uh, during this podcast. But yeah, if you if you ask me how my motivation here is in the preseason song, uh, pretty, pretty high. Hanging out with those female student athletes there. In That's Mountain. awesome. I got to be a part of the first grid event at Dark Mountain. And I, I think it would be tough to beat the beauty of the leaves. I mean, we were kind of, I think we hit it right at peak, peak leaf season. But it was pretty awesome. And that one, the theme was costumes because it was Halloween. Uh, my my wife and I both dressed up as two halves of an avocado. You cheated and dressed in your work clothes um, as a Marine. So, I I mean, we're going to count that as a costume. But next year, you can't fall back on that. you got to come with something different. Let's just uh, remind everyone, Sean, that I did, in fact, have makeup on my face for this one. My camouflage uh, face paint. <laughs> Was, uh, was on so I, I think it qualifies as a real costume but fair enough fair enough we'll have yeah to yeah but next for... year next year you next can't come I, as a marine again <laughs> I, I hear you and uh yeah and just, you can't uh, just dress in sweats and say you're, that you're coming as a retired marine like i'm gonna go ahead and preempt that one as well so we need more originality on the costumes uh, but not not a satin red jacket with a lot of marine patches on it you, you can't do that golly <laughs> taking it's away not... all the yeah nothing marine themed yeah, well, uh, but, but before we get into into the meat of some of the podcasts, I'll just uh, while we're on on that topic, uh, and I don't think we'll probably be recording the next podcast at the time we have our last grit preseason event, uh, three December out at Lake James State Park, uh, ten to four p.m. Still time to register. Still some open spots there for our female student athletes. So uh, certainly uh, out towards the Charlotte area is where we're doing that at Lake James State Park. So good opportunity. One last grit preseason event. And, and if you haven't been to Lake James, it's a pretty awesome trail. I just did the barn burner 50 K race, which definitely uh, does a lot of the Lake James trail. So that that's a really good one. And uh, what's the theme for that one? Cause I know the, the first theme was costume trail masquerade. The second one that you did yesterday was neon. Everybody was wearing neon. The third one, what's the Th third one is out of this world or space theme. So uh, you know, a safe to ride in space theme costume. Awesome. This one. Yeah. I'm look, looking forward to it. It should be a uh, pretty good. And um, the first, the first one, there was a student athlete dressed up as Bob Ross and she had gotten all of the color sample palettes from uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot for, for house paints and put them all in her wheels. It was an amazing costume, but I think hands down, there were some, there were some awesome costumes of Bob Ross, I think was one of my favorites. We, we have a level of creativity in our female student athletes that's just uh, out of this world. Ah, see what I did there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's way too so, early for a dad joke. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you, I knew you were going to ask me, Sean, so I, I had, to, had to go there early. Uh, but but I will tell you, to, to answer your original question about, you know, how am I doing, uh, the stoke level is pretty high. And so I, I want to take this opportunity to introduce Austin Banker, the founder of Cognitive MTB. And just over uh, the course of some discussions over the past several weeks, uh, Austin and Cognitive MTB have agreed to be a league sponsor uh, for our, our mountain bike league. Specifically, they're looking to help us with our team trail core program. Uh, Shell Frost, our programs director, is thinking through what team trail core should be and will be for uh, the upcoming and future seasons. And so it is just fantastic uh, having a great local North Carolina company like Cognitive MTB come on board and, and sponsor this league. So, Austin, I want to uh, turn it over to you here. Uh, if you give us a quick introduction to you and a quick introduction to uh, Cognitive MTB and uh, your thoughts on the, uh, the relationship here with uh, the North Carolina Interscholastic Cycling League. Austin, welcome aboard. Yeah, Brian, Sean, thanks for having me on the podcast today and very excited to be a sponsor for the league. Um, so we are located in Hendersonville, um, about 15 miles away from Pisgah National Forest and DuPont State Forest. And my family and I moved here about five years ago, about five and a half. 
and I, I had this idea and shortly after moving here, I, I launched Cognitive, <clears throat> which was just a real kind of small, casual um, apparel brand, very, very small corner of my garage. And um, really with the, the vision of a couple things, one was creating casual apparel um, to kind of elicit the, the mountain bike lifestyle, right? There's just not a lot out there that's, that's, in, that's not just logos, like brand logos. So if somebody knows you know, I'll, I'll name a, a big mountain bike brand like Fox, right? They see that and, well, do you moto or do you mountain bike? And there really wasn't a lot of lifestyle apparel that kind of went um, along with mountain biking. So that was kind of like one of the initial visions along with creating designs that represented some of our um, favorite places to ride. So initially launched the brand with some unique designs representing Pisgah National Forest and DuPont State Forest. And, um, <clears throat> you know, never, never did anything crazy and, and uh, went and got an investor or anything like that. We've really just grown the brand very slow and organically. And we kind of called a direct feedback loop, like really listening to our customer base, our community, and figuring out what the needs are, um, you know, in the market. Um, we obviously, uh, anybody that knows our brand, um, probably about almost three years ago, we started transitioning into the performance apparel um, market. And um, that's a huge piece of our business today. So as the brand kind of grew, um, I got involved with the local trail clubs here, Pisgah Area Sorba and Friends of DuPont. And um, probably like a lot of people, the, mis the misconception is, um, you know, when a tree falls, the um, National Forest Service employees go cut it out. And, um, you know, when a trail gets muddy and needs work, the, the, you know, well, my taxes go to the national forest budget, right? <laughs> and I quickly found out that's not the case. Um, a lot of you might know that, you know, um, a lot of our agencies just have very, very low budgets to take care of our public land, trails, roads, and all of that. And so a majority, if not all of them, um, really hinge upon the uh, volunteer groups that are formed that get involved and help advocate for this land, um, advocate for access, advocate for you know, protecting the resource when it comes to sustainability, but also, you know, building new trails, keeping the ones that are maintained. Um, so it was really, honestly, kind of an eye opener to me. And um, so I saw the need for that. And um, probably about two years into the business, we had ever since, ever since Cognitive has launched, every product that's been sold, a portion of it goes back to public land. But we formed um, officially what's called the 2% for the Trails Program about three years ago. And that's a really simple structure for us where 2% of our top line revenue goes back into public land through volunteer organizations. We work with a lot of nonprofits through our custom program, doing, you know, jerseys and gloves and fundraiser items. Um, and then um, obviously the cognitive brand itself, anytime you, you support us, you know, part of that goes back to the trails that we all love and ride. And so as we kind of, you know, started, you know, meeting people and doing some team kits for, for NICA, um, teams and, and learning more. Obviously, you know, Brian, you and I started connecting and um, we wanted to be a part of the organization because we, you know, see the tremendous value that it brings and, um, you know, equipping not only youth today, but also bringing up the riders of tomorrow, right, that are going to be there to take care of this land and be a part of our sport and take it to the next level. And um, uh, finding out about the Teen Trail Corps was a, was a really awesome thing. Um, that really fit our mission and vision. And uh, that's kind of how we ended up here. Well, thanks uh, so much, Austin. You encapsulated very well as we try and build lifelong mountain bikers with our student athletes. Part of that is certainly uh, taking care of the trail systems. Um, you know, many of our teams will be out there taking care of their own local trail systems. And again, we're thinking through as a league how we do that uh, at the league level. So it's great having a partner who's passionate about the sport, passionate about the trail systems we all use. And uh, just seemed like a relationship uh, we wanted to bring together. So I want to thank you uh, for coming on board and, and being a sponsor for this league, Austin. Yeah, it's our pleasure. We're, we're very excited. Obviously, we're just getting started. And, um, you know, we're not only excited to, you know, be a part of it financially, but also, um, you know, we, we've got experience working with nonprofits. And hopefully we can add some value there, too, as we, you know, um, work together on that program and, and talking through all the, the different possibilities to have the greatest impact. So it's it's exciting to to just number one know that this program exists, but also be a part of that. And like again, there's still so such a large portion of the mountain bike base that just doesn't understand how a lot of public land works. And 
to think that we have an impact, the ability to have an impact on the youth that are involved in the sport and bringing that awareness. Um, just imagine what that impact's going to look like, you know, down the road as they grow up and, and further that mission and vision. Absolutely. And I'll just uh, mention here uh, for our audience, uh, this is part of the official launch announcing the relationship and, and the partnership uh, and just encourage our teams out there to consider cognitive for their uh, jersey or apparel uh, needs. A lot of positive feedback, Austin, from the coaches initially and some teams that are already working with you uh, speak very highly of the quality and the fit of the uh, the Cognitive MTB product. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate the support here. Yeah, thank you for that. We're, we're very excited about it. All right. Well, Sean, I think uh, that's a good intro to Cognitive MTB and we'll uh, – you know, I'll, I'll work my way through some social media things with uh, with Austin over the next couple of days. We'll, we'll push that out to the broader uh, broader league and uh, all of our supporters so they, they're aware of the relationship. Definitely. And I think uh, next steps for my end is going to be sharing some of that custom apparel program information with our teams so that they can consider that for their jerseys this year. All right. Well, Austin, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Sorry that I didn't see a golden opportunity for a dad joke or a dad pun, but I will promise I will do better next time you have me on, okay? Definitely on that. You. And then I really, really need you to think long and hard about your uh, stance against <laughs> wireless electronic disc brakes, but, um, you know, I, we can talk. You know, I've been Googling that in the background ever since you said it. Well, <laughs> like, so... Is that a real thing? <laughs> It's not a real thing yet, but okay. um, I have some exciting opportunities for some level A uh, kind of round of uh, financial backing uh, for the company that I'm forming. Mm -hmm. And we can talk offline about that. But, you know, if you want to funnel some of uh, all of that money that you're getting from your apparel into um, what I think is really the future of mountain biking with wireless electronic disc brakes, you know, we, we can talk. Brian is, is a hundred percent sold. He is uh, coming on board. So just let me know and uh, we can go from there. I appreciate it. Well, well I'll, as, I'll, as I, as I thought about it more, if it, if it eliminates the issue of having to lead your brakes, cause that seems to be like a very common problem for me. Then I, <laughs> you know, you could sway me really like quickly cause I have two bikes right now that I have issues on. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, people get concerned about like, well, what if the battery goes dead? And I'm like, you know, that's we'll we'll work that right. out. That's a that's a beta thing. Right. Like, we'll we'll take care of that later on. But uh, solar. Right. it's all solar. <laughs> yeah, it's all solar. Right. right. Say, right. <laughs> it's all solar. You need power generation through the cranks. Never exactly. Yeah. That's where we're going. Never happened. So. Well, Austin, definitely, we really appreciate you taking time um, to be with us this Sunday, um, taking time out of your schedule. And one thing that uh, for me is always important, a lot of our student athletes, they really are interested in pursuing jobs in mountain biking. And, you know, the pathway to being a professional mountain bike racer is very narrow and very difficult and kind of fraught all along the way with lots of different steps. But I think people like yourself who are able to create companies around mountain biking that show this like alternative path of like, you're involved in the sport, you're involved in the industry and you're making a, a living at it is really a great example for a lot of student athletes who want to continue on with the mountain bike lifestyle and make it a part of their careers later on post uh, schooling. So thanks for kind of like being a part of us and, and being able to provide that kind of example to our student athletes. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's been, you know, kind of a dream to, you know, um, kind of melt those two things together as far as right your passion and your career. And, um, it's, it's pretty awesome. You know, some, not all of that, but sometimes I get to actually write, well, I always tell Andrew and my wife that anytime I ride my bike, it's work related. So <laughs> as long as she doesn't listen to this, we're good. <laughs> I'll make well, sure. <laughs> well, every time I've ever I'm run working. into you at Canuga, you're like stoked and, you know, happy to, happy to ride. So definitely you're doing something yeah. right. Right. All work related. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Austin. Yeah. Thanks, Austin. Yeah. Thanks guys. Appreciate having me on. Absolutely. Brian, I think now's as good a time as any to start talking about something coming up real, real quick here. It seems like it's just two weeks away. 
boy, we, we are two weeks from League Summit, Sean. League I know. Summit. Yeah. 19, 20 November, Rocky Mount, uh, North Carolina. Uh, we, still plenty of spots to register for folks. Um, encourage folks to get, get online and, and, and reserve a spot. And uh, Sean, do you want to talk through some of the content we just pushed out recently? Yeah, definitely. So we, yeah. we've put out the schedule. Uh, we are, you know, reasonable with the amount of time we're trying to make it as packed as possible without uh, taking away time to do the things that I always find important in any professional development, which is, you know, hanging out with people that do the thing that I do because there's a lot of learning that takes place in those informal spaces and doing the thing that we all love, which is riding our bikes. So Rocky Mountain provides us with a really great opportunity to do some riding on the property. So when we look at the schedule uh, Saturday, we're looking at, you know, introduction and getting together, kind of like settling in. That's going to be from 8 to 845 and then 9 to 12. So three hours, we're going to divide everybody up into three groups and you're going to move through three different uh, sessions. And one of those sessions is going to be led by me. And it is one about getting the most from pit zone. It, I'm hoping to take all of the questions that I get routinely and kind of distill that into a lot of knowledge, a lot of things that I've discovered about pit zone over the years and things that I think will help our head coaches and team directors, but really any coach. So hopefully that will be a lot. And if we've got time, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, team snap and how that all plays out. And then our new vice president on the advisory board Jeff Cathy is going to be presenting about a coach leadership pathway and some ideas that he has on that. And then our programs director, Shell Frost, is going to be presenting a grit coach training. And that's going to be important for all of our coaches as well. And then we're going to break for lunch uh, from 12 to 12.45. And then from 1 to 2.30, we'll come back together. And we've got somebody named Brian Russell who is going to talk about race weekend planning. And then myself, uh, I am going to be introducing a uh, thing that we're going to be working on. We've been working on it. We're going to continue working on it, which is a coach supporter mentorship program. And that's going to be a way for our local coach supporters to have a greater mentorship role with the teams in their areas. And then after that, we are going to break and get ready. We'll have about half an hour for everybody to go and get ready for a group ride. And then we're going to do a group ride, which uh, Bill Stevens, our chief course setter, has been working diligently on kind of figuring out how we're going to do the group ride. And then after that, 5.30 onward is kind of everyone's personal time, catch dinner, those sorts of things. There's lots of restaurants on the property, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Brian, you probably know a little more about that. I, well, yeah, I'll tell you, I, the, right after the grit clinic at Medoc Mountain, Rocky Mountain Mills is 30 minutes away. So me, Shel Frost, our programs director, and Todd Lester, uh, our race director, went down to have dinner down there. What a fantastic venue. Just a, It's an old mill. They've refurbished into both shops and restaurants. A lot of wide open spaces, you know, uh, restaurants with some deck spaces to eat out at. Uh, just was a really nice vibe last night as we had dinner. So I think f- folks will really enjoy uh, the venue we've selected for this one. So then Sunday, we're going to come back together at eight and from eight to eight 30, we're going to do our assemble. Um, I think you called it Brian, a warm start, rolling start, warm start, you know, folks will come in. We don't want to be, like you said, we don't want to be too kind of prescriptive and jamming <laughs> stuff in. This is an opportunity to, uh, to get to know one another too. And, and like you said, uh, I think that song uh, from Dave, Dave Matthews band popped in my mind, the space between, right? A lot of that, you know, relationship building happens in the space between. So yeah, rolling start uh, both Saturday and Sunday morning coming in. All right. And then also during that time, our uh, volunteer coordinator, Diane LeBlanc, she's going to be explaining a new concept for our league volunteers at races this weekend or this, this year. And that's going to be really important for everybody to kind of give her you know, 15, 20 minutes of attention so that she can go through that and explain it. Uh, I think it's a really great idea that she's got um, that you've been working with her as well, Brian. So that's going to be important. And then after that, the 8.30 to 11.30, we're going to break up again into three uh, 
groups, cohorts, however you want to think of it, and go through our three other uh, sessions. So we have um, Shel Frost, who is doing Coaches as Culture Keepers. So really that idea of like how culture develops and is maintained on a team. And Aaron Christian, our other coach supporter, is going to be working – talking about mental health training, which he's been really working on that for about a year now. And I am also going to be uh, giving a session that kind of was born from my son's kind of interest, growing interest, and and now real passion behind downhill and enduro racing and his leaving behind uh, any kind of interest in cross country and talking about how do we coach to those kids while still maintaining all of the um, NICA responsibilities and regulations. And I'm going to be talking about something called reactive agility coaching, which is a really interesting kind of mental training that is done in the course of physical activities. And it really speaks to, very fast decision-making on the fly, which is something that downhill and enduro racers have to do. Uh, recognition of situations and uh, discarding of unnecessary information. So it's it's very interesting. It's something that I, I kind of got from observing a lot of downhill uh, pros as they were warming up and getting ready for their runs. Uh, it's also very prominent in... Um, uh, Formula One and a couple of other like just high speed sort of high intensity sports. So I, I'm really interested in kind of getting everybody's feedback and take on that and, and looking at how we're going to collaborate on making this something that's a bigger part of our uh, coaching toolbox. And then after that, we're going to have a student athlete panel just to kind of bring us full circle back to the whole reason why we do this, which is the student athletes. And then Brian, you're going to send us off with uh, words of uh, encouragement and inspiration. Is that correct? I, I suspect I may not have to say much after the student athletes uh, tell, tell the coaches kind of what, how mountain bike has impacted their lives, you know, what uh, they appreciate from their coaches uh, spent some time with all three of them talking that through and they're excited to share uh, how this uh, league, how their coach or how their team has supported them. Uh, in a very positive way. And so, I, I, Sean, I, I don't think I'll have to say much <laughs> at the end. Uh, I will certainly thank folks for coming. Uh, and just as a reminder, all that great training you talked about, eight CEUs uh, of credit for for attending all those courses. And I, I think I really appreciate what you've put together, Sean. This is, uh, again, we've clarified, this is not a leader summit. Uh, those are still available online to meet your level three requirement. But this is uh, training tailored to our league and the things we uh, can equip our coaches with. And I think your class you just described tied to uh, Aaron's class on mental fitness, you know, so how do you deal with quick situation decisions? But, you know, Aaron's is like, okay, you have a setback and how do you get that negative thought quickly out of your head and focus on the positive and, and get back in it? Uh, I haven't seen anything like that in my uh, Nike experience. So I think this is a really good opportunity uh, for our coaches, team directors, and even some of the new coaches. Uh, that's my race weekend planning. I showed up as a new coach, uh, in the Maryland league. And I was like, Oh, that wasn't in the online training, <laughs> how to do a race weekend. So, uh, really excited about the opportunity. Just as a reminder, uh, we're, we're, we're covering your lunch both days. You get a nice t-shirt from cognitive MTB, uh, is providing our, our league summit t-shirt. So I think it's a real great opportunity to bring folks together, Sean. Definitely. And, and one thing that I want to stress is that this is not just something for head coaches and team directors. This is really any coach, who is interested in kind of, you know, a longer term commitment in the league. Like if you're, if you're here and you get it and you really like what we're doing and you really like what your team's doing and, and you're kind of like, yeah, this, this really is for, for me and, and my child, then take some time to come check out these kind of deeper trainings that really go way beyond what we see in that learning management system online. You know, that's when we, when we do that risk management and, and all of those things, you know, those are all very important, but they're not speaking really to that, that 
what's what's a team practice like what what am i really trying to do with my student athletes how do i help my student athletes grow you know keeping them safe is our number one priority but we can't just be all about safety we've got to also be looking at how do we get them to grow as student athletes how do we get them to grow as individuals how do we get them to go in whatever direction they find interesting about mountain biking and and still us provide something for them and i think that's where for the first time, I feel comfortable and confident with talking about something that I think for those coaches that are always talking about all these kids want to do is enduro, all they want to do is downhill, like I can't keep them interested. Here's something that we can probably keep them interested with because it really is kind of hard, but but overall worthwhile for them to train. Absolutely. And again, a lot of relationship building opportunity too at that league summit, just to get to know folks from across the state. That's part part of what attracts me to the league, Sean, is just I get to meet great people across our entire state with a passion for helping out these kids. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Awesome. All right. I think that, that pretty much covers the important stuff for, for this podcast. Um, I don't know about you, but did you bring your dad joke? I, I, I did. Can I cover two things before, before yeah. I think I, I can, and, and they are related. So, so bear with me. And, are, no, no problem. I don't I'll, want to cut you short. No, I'll mention it. Cause bef- by the time we get to the next podcast, uh, NICA will have launched this year, share the ride campaign. And I will provide more information to our team directors and head coaches about how NICA is attempting to maximize uh, this season, uh, the season of giving, essentially. Uh, you know, if you look at all the statistics, usually November, December, the Giving Tuesdays, that's really when NICA sees the bulk of its donations come in every year. It's a, it's a, it's a, a dramatic spike when you look across the year. And so through social media, uh, we'll be getting information out about how to donate to uh, the league, not just NICA, but they've created a great uh, landing page where you can select North Carolina, your league that, you know, someone wants to donate to, and just a great way to generate some uh, resource for this league. And I wanted to connect that, Sean, just real quick uh, to tell our uh, team director, head coaches who's listening, uh, I am processing through the season scholarships. Uh, we do have student athletes uh, coming from families with some need. We know some times are tough, inflation and all that. Uh, I am addressing those as they come in. Uh, but again, getting those donations from a lot of supporters is a way to make sure we have the resource to support uh, the student athletes. And we want to, again, get more kids on bikes. That's a great way uh, to do it is supporting some of our donation camp- campaigns coming up. So we continue to do that for our student athletes. And on that note, we just took delivery of seven brand new uh, specialized rock hopper comp loaner bikes that we will be uh, also distributing out through the loaner bike program. And this is on the heels of us selling seven of our previous fleet of loaner bikes and kind of to, to show how our program works. So we purchased these loaner bikes and we try to get at least two seasons of use out of them. And after that, we start looking to either sell them to the student athlete who has them or if it's a bike that is you know two seasons old or older we then sell them on as well and so we put all seven of these up on our um on our facebook uh coaches group as uh, you know here's we got seven bikes here's the sizes 200 dollars each uh we definitely paid much more than that they're they're nice bikes uh they've seen you know they've seen some use But we felt like that was a way for us to kind of cycle through so that we're not holding on to older bikes and then getting those new bikes in and getting them to where we can put them in the in the rotation and now two seasons with those and we'll move them out as well. So um, something to just keep in mind that we we really are pretty purposeful about how that program works and trying to get those bikes into the hands of teams and student athletes that need them. Are you, are you claiming that as your dad joke when you said cycle through the, the no. story? I mean, Sean. No, no, that that's just natural. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, with that, is it time for? I, I think so. I think it really is. So and do I get to go first? Is that how this goes? No, I'm going to put you on the spot. You can go second. Nice. Okay. So, so yeah. uh, I was, I was noticing some pictures and 
I was, I teach earth and environmental science. So I'm always kind of like looking for pictures and things like that to use in my class. And I kept noticing that you only ever see seagulls flying over the ocean, but not over a bay. And do you know why that is? Do you know why you never see them flying over the bay? You only see them flying over the, the sea. Because then they'd be bagels. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That makes me hungry. <laughs> so, because uh, we're not too far from Halloween, right? We're less than a week from, from Halloween. So, uh, we're, what, we're 51 weeks away from Halloween. <laughs> so, so that's your view. <laughs> Must be the costume thing with the, with the um, I'm in. Um, why, why did the sad ghost ride the elevator? Ooh, why did the sad ghost ride the elevator? To lift his spirits. <laughs> oh, okay. On that, on that one, we definitely. I think we got to go. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. I'm with you, Brian. Thank you so much again. Um, it was it was a pleasure as always. Thanks for contacting Austin and getting him to come on. Um, I'm really excited about that partnership, and we've got some other things that we'll be talking about as well as far as some some collaborations and sponsorships with uh, the league at the the league summit. For those of you that haven't registered, do not delay. Please go and register. Please get your room. Please do all the things needed so that we can have an awesome league summit because it just won't be as awesome without you. That's a great way to close. Can't wait to see you there. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Brian.